I am Mahmoud Azzain Hamid. I work here at the University for Peace as an uh, uh, assistant professor uh, in the Department of uh, Environment, Peace and Security. And uh, originally I'm from Sudan, I still live there. And um, I did all my studies actually at the University of Khartoum and uh, I went for my MA and, 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 PhD, and PhD also at the Institute of Social Studies in Holland. And uh, I came here last year uh, in October. I find uh, uh, the Institute here a very beautiful environment where you, can, uh, you could interact actually with many people coming from all walks of life and coming from all disciplines actually. So it's an interdisciplinary institute, an interdisciplinary school where you, you engage yourself in different kinds of discussions and debates with almost everybody. And probably as other people said, uh, there are no boundaries between people. So you can really uh, find yourself in the middle of, of the crowd of academicians and students coming from all over uh, countries in the world. Uh, my research concerns are to a great extent until today centered around Sudan. However, they are very much relevant to my department kind of uh, work and I have been admitted for the job here because of that. I did my PhD on the Nile. Basically, I'm pursuing issues related to water scarcity. I'm looking at uh, the environmental scarcity issues and uh, that environmental scarcity issue also gives me another branch of my research interest which is basically the socio-cultural displacement and this happens when large groups of people uh, are displaced basically because of environmental hazards etc etc and it has its implications of course for peace and security in different parts of the world at the local level and at the international level this is a typical case of uh, Sudan. Uh, in Sudan, I looked at this environmental scarcity issue as a, another cause of water scarcity, which is very often people neglect it. People very often talk about population increase as cause of scarcity in all kinds of re natural resources, included, including water. But in my case, and, and particularly in my research in Sudan, it gives me another kind of window to look at this whole dynamics of scarcity. And I think it's basically related to structural scarcity. So it's politics and political economy issues that cause water scarcity in Sudan. Basically by pushing large numbers of people from different regions of Sudan towards the Nile uh, zone. And, and this is very much related to how the ruling elite, basically from the Nile River, have actually maintained rules of regu and regulations of accessing resources which very much impacted the regions away from the Nile. So the Nile was protected somehow through kind of private ownership, while lands elsewhere were left for communal ownership. And then this communal ownership has caused kind of abuse of those kind of lands, caused wide-scale uh, uh, desertification and, and collapse of local economies. And then pe people moved in large numbers towards the river, where they caused a new demand for water there leaving the regions which have their waters previously rich with water and have been maintaining for centuries. Uh, the sociocultural aspect is actually when you have all of a sudden millions of people surrounding the capital, and that is the, la the lab for making politics and policies. And now you can imagine the urban political actors, some of them got a chance that all of a sudden they have million people in their surrounding that they can mobilize and use for their own politics. And this is probably uh, very much related to extremism, the rise of extremism in Sudan. Okay, um, in Tajikistan actually we have been for a four-day seminar which, is, which took place actually between the 20th and the 23rd of February 2006. And um, it was organized by the Central Asia program of UPs. And the main concern, actually the aim of, of the, uh, the theme of the, of the program, of the seminar, is peace building in association to uh, identity, Islam, etc., uh, etc., et in Central Asia. Uh, the main, uh, the aim of the whole seminar is actually to develop 
a curricula which can be used in teaching in the universities and can be used for training civil society uh, organizations. And I believe uh, this is, of course, the mission of UPs as an international institute uh, for uh, higher education for peace. And its concern is actually to develop uh, educational instruments and teaching methodologies, methodologies which can be used for uh, expanding and spreading the culture of peace and, and, of course, building the human capacities in different regions, especially regions like Central Asia. Tajikistan is, is certainly one as a post-war country in transition, etc., etc. Uh, I believe the workshop was a success because it has attracted uh, a number of, of high-level uh, people from Tajikistan and from the region. Uh, the success is also related to the diversity of people who are involved in this kind of seminar. Uh, people coming from all walks of life in, in Central Asia uh, region, including in Tajikistan. And uh, these people, not only because they are high level, but because they are very, uh, very much politicized people. And in that way, and that way, actually, I think they have really uh, dug in depth all the issues related uh, to conflict in Tajikistan. And interestingly, despite the big divide among the people in Tajikistan between a secularist camp and a kind of clergy or Islamist camp, at the end of the workshop, uh, people really developed a kind of uh, very good curriculum which is uh, now in a, in a form of a draft, which can be finalized in our uh, next return, hopefully in June. And I, I find it very interesting because you get the feeling that the divide between secularists and, and clergy is so deep that they cannot come to terms together. And I believe UPs, by, doing, by organizing this kind of activity, is doing a great job that it's actually digging a potential that probably no, no one would discover unless you organize this kind of uh, activities. And in that sense, I think the whole initiative of UPs, not only in Central uh, uh, Asia, but also in Africa and Latin America, is, is, is a great uh, kind of initiative which should be supported and should be uh, given all kind of, of uh, appreciation from all audience.